Hey guys, in this month's top five, I'm going to be sharing with you my favorite fairy tale retellings. So, fairy tale retellings. I love them, especially when they're well done, especially when they're new and unique and creative and they really flip everything you know about a fairy tale, you know what I mean? So yeah, these, these are going to be my favorite fairy tale retellings. I've read quite a number of these and it was it was a wee bit difficult narrowing it down to top five, but I think I was successful. And yeah, the reason I decided to do this top five, uh, one of my favorite TV shows, Once Upon a Time, is coming to its conclusion. It's going to be having its series finale. And I do, I love that show. Um, if you don't know what Once Upon a Time is about, uh, it's about this uh, young woman named Emma Swan. Um, her, her son that she gave up long ago when he was born, he comes to her and he tells her, hey, come to this town called Storybrooke. And guess what? All of the characters in this town, uh, they're all fairy tale characters. There's Snow White and Prince Charming and the Evil Queen and Red Riding Hood and Jimmy Cricket and blah blah blah. It goes on. There's so many fairy tale people in this town. And yeah, the whole show just revolves around Emma discovering that this town is in fact full of fairy tale characters and yeah, how she's related to some of these people. So it, yeah, uh, I just kind of wanted to dedicate a, a whole video I suppose, to my love of Once Upon a Time, and yeah, share my favorite fairy tale or retellings. And yeah, if you're sad and upset like I am that Once Upon a Time is coming to its conclusion, you may want to check out some of these books in the future to, to fill that void. <laughs> At number five, I have Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister by Gregory Maguire. And of course, Gregory Maguire is kind of well known for his classic fairy tale retellings and obviously he's going to make another appearance on this list. Uh, but yeah, first is Confessions of an Ugly Stepsister. I adore this book. It takes place in 17th century Holland and it is a retelling of Cinderella but told through the point of view of her ugly, ugly stepsisters. And you guys, this, this was just so creative and unique and just very different for a Cinderella retelling. I mean, it does have those classic Cinderella tropes in there, but everything is kind of done in a, a, a just a really unique, different way, done in a classic Gregory Maguire style. If you've read Gregory Maguire, you know that he, he does really take some crazy, wild flips and turns when he retells these classic fairy tales. And yeah, I, I just really loved the story from start to finish in this. It definitely has some twists and turns that I didn't see coming. And yeah, just a darker, more intense retelling of Cinderella. You know, get away from the Disney Cinderella, because this is definitely not the Disney Cinderella. At number four, Elias Hook by Lisa Jensen. And you guys, if Hook is one of your favorite characters on Once Upon a Time, you need to pick this book up. I think you'll love it because I certainly love this book. Uh, obviously, Elias Hook, if you can't already tell, this is a retelling of, of Peter Pan, but yeah, not about Peter Pan. It is a retelling of Captain Hook and exploring Hook as a character, how exactly he got to Neverland. And uh, yeah, you guys, seriously, especially if you loved the Neverland story arc on Once Upon a Time. This is this is almost kind of similar because Hook is not the villain in this story. Peter Pan is the villain and I love that. It's just so clever and yeah Peter Pan is just creepy as hell and he does some truly horrific things to Captain Hook. <laughs> and um, yeah not only is this a retelling about Captain Hook but also thrown into the mix of everything. Uh, this young woman named Stella just kind of winds up in Neverland out of nowhere and yeah it's a big deal because no women are allowed in Neverland and this and that and yeah because I think this is prior to Wendy you know I think this is prior prior to Wendy and Darlene's even coming to 
to Neverland, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, yeah, I love this book, you guys. It is so good. Uh, it, there's, there's a bit of a romance in there. There's lots of action and adventure. And, yeah, really deeply exploring Hook as a character, which I loved. Like I said, if you love Captain Hook on Once Upon a Time, pick this up. <laughs> At number three, The Looking Glass Wars by Frank Better. And this is a trilogy that is a retelling of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And this is really great, you guys. Oh my goodness. Uh, this is definitely intended for, uh, I guess for children and for young adults. Kind of probably geared more towards young adults. Um, yeah, a bit of a darker take on Alice in Wonderland. Um, yeah, it follows, uh, Alice, Princess Alice, uh, who's the princess of, of Wonderland. Uh, but, uh, in comes, uh, is, is it the Queen of Hearts? I think it's the Queen of Hearts. In, in comes the Queen of Hearts, uh, who destroys everything, and Alice has to escape Wonderland, so she comes into Victorian London, where she has some adventures, and yeah, she's trying to figure out how to get back to Wonderland and to get back her throne. And yeah, the character of Hatter Madigan, oh my goodness, you've never seen the Mad Hatter portrayed in such a way as Frank Better portrays the Mad Hatter. Uh, you know, a lot of times the Mad Hatter is portrayed as being kind of whimsical and, and crazy and weird, you know? Uh, but yeah, in this, uh, the Mad Hatter, aka Hatter Madigan, he is a badass, you guys. He, he can fight, uh, he, he has hats, which he uses as weapons, because they have, like, knives and daggers and stuff in them. It's really badass, you guys. Uh, but yeah, if you're looking for a very, very different, unique take on Alice in Wonderland, I highly recommend this trilogy, because it does have a lot of familiar characters and familiar concepts that you do see in other Alice in Wonderland-related things. But yeah, everything is twisted and spun in its own unique way. I really love it. I love the character of Princess Alice and how she gets, you know, how she's trying to get back her throne and get how how the Queen of Hearts is portrayed in this and have her mad again. It's all great, you guys. I love it. At number two, Wicked by Gregory Maguire. Like I said, you guys, uh, Gregory Maguire was going to make another appearance on this list. And yeah, Wicked, uh, The Life and Times of the Wicked Witch of the West. So if you can't already tell from that title, this is a retelling of The Wizard of Oz, but done through the point of view of the Wicked Witch of the West. And oh boy, this, this is just stunning, you guys. This is stunning and gripping and captivating and yeah, really raw and gritty and dark. You know, this is definitely not a family-friendly version of the Wizard of Oz. Uh, the Wicked Witch, sometimes you love her, sometimes you hate her, but at the end of the day, you do really sympathize with her because you get told her story from the very beginning when she's born and then until she dies when Dorothy kills her. <laughs> Spoiler for The Wizard of Oz if you've not seen The Wizard of Oz, but it, it's, it's a very old movie at this point, so if you've not seen it, too bad. Uh, but yeah, I really love Gregor McGuire's take on The Wicked Witch and his take on just the world of Oz in general. And it's not just this first book because there's... I think there's... how many other books in the series? One, two... yeah, three. There's three other books in this series that just kind of flesh out the world of Oz and flesh out all of these well-known characters that you know from either the books or the movie. And yeah, he just really spins it all out and fleshes it out and he, he really makes Oz a place that you can feel and smell and visualize. Uh, it's not it's not cartoonish by any means. And, uh, yeah, uh, obviously there's the well-known stage play. Uh, I've never seen the play, you guys. I've never seen the play. I've heard a couple of the songs. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, so yeah, I don't really know how to compare this to the play since I've never seen it. But I, I kind of, from, from what I hear, the play is kind of vastly different from this book. See, if you love the play, uh, this book is probably going to be quite different, I hear. But yeah, I love this book. You guys, I highly recommend it. Um, I especially do recommend the first book. 
the other books in the in the series are either hit or miss. Uh, I don't think they're as good as this first book, but I definitely do at least recommend this first book. And then, yeah, if you want to venture out and read the rest of the books in the series, then do so. And at number one, if you've not already guessed it, The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Mayer. Yeah, guys. Oh. My. God. When I first heard about this series and the concept, I was kind of like, what the hell? That sounds so stupid. But the more and more that I started hearing about it and the more and more positive reviews that I saw, I was like, okay, I gotta read this series. And I am so glad that I did because The Lunar Chronicles... It, not only is it a favorite a fairy tale retelling for me, but it's also just kind of one of my favorite series in general. <laughs> and yeah, if you don't know what the Lunar Chronicles is about, they are sci-fi retellings of classic fairy tales. In this first book, you have Cinder, who is Cinderella. The next book is Scarlet, which is about Red Riding Hood. Uh, the third book is Cress, which is about Rapunzel. The fourth book is Winter, which is about Snow White. And yeah, all of these characters weaving together in this really magnificent, interesting, creative way. Uh, like I said, a sci-fi retelling. Uh, there's some things that take place up in space. There's things that take place down on Earth. And yeah, this is kind of like a futuristic earth where some things have happened and yeah but things are still really advanced and yeah there's this sickness called um uh, like a the lunar sickness or something like that uh yeah it's it's really devastating it's almost like the plague and yeah you have robots and androids and just all these crazy futuristic science fiction elements and somehow fairy tale characters just weave into it so cleverly and so brilliantly and there's just so many things from the fairy tales you know you'll recognize them and somehow Marissa Mayer just kind of weaves them in quite perfectly. So yeah guys that's it for my top five favorite fairy tale retellings. You guys in the comments below what are some of your favorite fairy tale retellings? Have you read the books that I've mentioned? Are there others? that I've either left out or others that maybe I need to read myself. And yeah, once upon a time, you guys, it's coming to an end. I'm very sad and upset. Uh, so yeah, talk to me. Talk to me about fairy tale retellings. Talk to me about once upon a time. It's all great. <laughs> so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye guys.